is when I first got with Mr. Perfect, I get a call from um, Howard Finkel. He says, we're going to do six vignettes. Uh, one of them is going to be with Mr. Perfect, the ping pong, diving, golf. Uh, I can't remember the others. Uh, whatever. But the Horseshoes. Pink, horseshoes, yes. Bowling. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't in there for the bowling one. I think they did about 30 takes for him to get 12 strikes. But He was soaked by the end. His shirt was completely wet. Yeah. As you see him doing them, his, his shirt just... And then we were on Regis Philbin. He refused to do bowling with Regis because it's live TV. And he took that perfect gimmick seriously. So, Mr. Perfect, uh, Regis Philbin came over to me and says, Lanny, what the hell's going on with your partner? He doesn't want to do the bowling with me. I got a half a mind to send you guys out. I said, first of all, he's not my partner. They put us together. Secondly, what probably is the problem is um, he's Mr. Perfect and he expects to get a strike. It's a lot easier to do it when there's post-production editing than on live television. You know, so I said he doesn't want to get a non-strike. So that would kill his gimmick. Actually, what killed his gimmick is not bowling. What killed his gimmick is cocaine. Okay, I'm just saying it. Now, people say, well, how can you speak ill of the dead? The dead are dead. I'm trying to stop somebody still alive from making a stupid choice like he made. Is that all right? You know, um, at least learn from, he can't learn from his own mistakes. But I'm hoping if anybody listens to this, they might learn from his mistakes. S speaking of cocaine, can you tell us just how common the drugs were in the 80s, in the dressing rooms, and in the partying after? Because I know there was a lot of drugs flying around. The oh, I came in there in June of 1985, and uh, there was cocaine and steroids were abundant. And I can truthfully say that I've never smoked a cigarette, marijuana, or tobacco. I've never taken a drug, aspirin or otherwise, up until... February of 1989, when I got the gimmick as the genius, and I was got a, I got about a month off. I grew my hair out, grew a beard. So I got on Dr. Durabalin, and then when I, when I came to the, uh, my first shot, I took my shirt off, and I'd been in the sunbed, and uh, took my shirt off, oiled up, and everybody said, "Holy, what the hell happened to you?" Is never mind, we know what happened. Whoa. And everybody said, look at Lanny's muscles. And everybody came in the room. And um, then... So I that was a good feeling. That was a good feeling to get the... Uh, you know, and trust me, I was... I mean, we had the warlord and barbarian flipping over me. And that's, like, ridiculous because... Not to mention the sexual aspects of the steroids. The sexual aspects? Well, <laughs> but what happened was... Um, after the Hulk Hogan match was in, uh, was Halloween of 1989, um, I took a, I mean, I realized that I had gone to the very top and I was not going to live there. I was just going to, like, Monopoly game in jail or just visiting. I was just visiting. And uh, I took a shower, looked down at myself, and I saw my testicular atrophy. And I thought to myself, self, it might be a good idea to cut my losses right now. And I pulled out that needle, and within two months, my muscles were all gone. And um, my, my sexual libido was, was taking a slump, but I was married at the time, so it made absolutely no difference at all.